Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's time for another stream of consciousness drive time rant. And once again, this one is about a post I saw on the forum and then led me to a whole bunch of other places. And it's all about the big, well, <laughs> there's some buzz anyway going around about the new um, Texas Instruments uh, TI launch pad uh, development uh, board, development platform. It's basically um, TI's big push, although they don't, I don't think they actually say it, but it's TI's big push into the um, new hobbyist slash hacker slash maker market. Uh, the very low cost market to get people into micro entry level microcontrollers and the new TI value line uh, series of uh, little 16 bit micros, very cheap ones, they, they claim they start from 25 cents uh, in I think thousand quantity or something like that or it might even be much higher than that but um, that's a bit of a crock for starters because that you know yeah you can get you might be able to get a 25 cent micro in high quantity but that's only for a half kilobyte uh, flash micro it's got no ADC in it or anything like that I think uh, don't quote me on that but yeah once again that's just all that marketing uh, jazz but anyway the new launch pad uh, board it's big huge selling point is that it's a complete development board and environment comes with a free um, trial, you know, uh, limited um, software, um, C software compilers, and it's only four dollars. And what is it? Four dollars and thirty cents. You've got to be kidding me! And the amazing thing is that's not just for the board either. You know, you think that'd just be for the little, the little board, like an Arduino style board, but it's not. It comes in the proper big box thing it's got like a little getting started guide it comes with a USB cable and um, you know and and it comes with two micro chips it's got a little um, it's got a little 20 pin um, uh, socket on the board where you can plug the micro in it comes with one of them's already pre-programmed and the others uh, just just a blank one one is the highest end one the two kilobyte chip with the ADC and the other one's not with the ADC I think and uh, yeah, four dollars and thirty cents, and that includes shipping. You gotta be shitting me, right? Uh, Ti are obviously doing this as a loss leader to get people into micros. And hey, my hats off to them to get a product to market for that price in people's hands for four dollars and thirty cents is insanely good. So my hat is off to TI. It's, I reckon it's fantastic. But there's a few problems with that which I'll talk about. Now, um, uh, are TI making any money on this? Well, clearly no, because if you do the basic math, right, even if they make a hundred thousand of these units and they make a dollar, and let's say they make a dollar clear profit on each one, which they may not be doing, um, I don't think, uh, I'd be very surprised if they're making a clear one dollar profit on each one, but let's assume they are. That's a hundred thousand dollars. Now I can tell you for nothing that um, it costs them more than a hundred thousand dollars to to bring this to market. By the time they, you know, they have a design team, they design it, the marketing people get involved, and the and the, you know they design all the packaging and then they do a couple of spins and they do this and that and they write the you know they write the little onboard program of firmware and they do the example files etc etc it cost them a lot more than a hundred thousand dollars to bring this four dollar board to market you can bet your bottom dollar so you can guarantee TI are not making any money on it so they're not in it to make money so they're clearly in there to you know, um, appeal to this new, um, I've talked about this huge market before, which has sprung up in the last four or five years from practically nowhere. Um, this hobbyist hacker slash maker market is massive now. And I think they realize that. And um, smart companies, um, 
TI seem to be one of them, that the smart companies will um, know that, you know, you have to get the young people involved in your chips. You know, even if they're not engineers or they're not students, if they're hobbyists or whatever, it, it doesn't matter. If you get those people using your chips, then they will, um, they have a very high probability of sticking with your brand and your chips for the rest of their career. Because they go on, they'll often go on to be, you know, um, uh, engineers of note or working at companies and then they'll bring their chip into the company and and so on and you can make you know it's a very long-term vision thing uh, to get something like that and TI are really trying to hit that so thumbs up to TI for that and it's 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 just fantastic now clearly this is being pitched against the Arduino board which is massively popular it's selling tens of thousands it may even be the in the hundreds of thousands I don't know but it, it's a huge seller now um, uh, by the way TI have made at least 10 or 20 thousand of these and how do I know that because um, if you look at the Mouser website who they're selling it through um, for four dollars thirty plus I think a dollar something delivery or something th even through Mouser uh, which is a bargain Mouser have ordered 9,800 and something of them if you look at their um, stock that's on its way and TI is selling it I think direct from their own uh, website as well. Now um, that means you know they've made you know 10 or 20 they've made like 20,000 of these at least um, clearly off the bat and I re you know without a doubt they are pitching it against the Arduino and they know it but they're, they're not going to say that but they definitely are pitching it against the Arduino. How could you not be? It's a similar sort of form factor. It's got the it's got the programmer uh, built into it. You know, it's got the USB um, uh, host. And it's got the USB interface, but it doesn't have the Arduino style uh, development environment. But hear me out. Now, um, the you know, TI will never admit that they're pitching in against that, but that's what they are. Now, I think they have made a massive, massive mistake by not making their expansion header connector. They've got, a, you know, a two-row um, single in-line expansion header on there, with, which uh, breaks out all the I.O. and everything. And they've put it in two rows, above, uh, you know, on top and below the uh, board, the top and bottom edges of the board, just like the Arduino, but it's not compatible with the Arduino uh, shield system. Now, I think this is a huge, huge mistake because there's a m big market out there for all these Arduino shields. And if TI just, even if they didn't advertise it, if they just, it just so happened to match the Arduino, um, you know, shield form factor, the pinout, then they could have made use of all these shields and you know companies like you know Artifruit and and um, other companies that are developing you know or selling and doing all these Arduino shields. There's dozens of them. Um, they could make uh, the the hobbyists, the target market, could make instant use of those boards. And I think it's suicide that they didn't include that capability. But I do understand that TI is a big company. They have a big company. Uh, mentality, you know, they they have that Dilbert-like management uh, system, as all big companies do, and I can certainly understand where um, why they didn't do it. <laughs> I still don't agree with it, um, but I I can I can see where the company. And I've worked in big companies, and that's that's how it works. And um, I can just picture some maybe some poor development engineer in the design in the development team um, at, at the meeting for the you know the, the design review spec meeting for this thing and um, uh, maybe you know saying oh what if we you know nervously puts up his hand oh what if we just uh, make it compatible with the Arduino shields and then you know big debate ensues and he gets shot down in flames and he or she gets shot down in flames and you know and uh, they've learnt their lesson. So I can just picture that happening at the TI design review meeting because I'm sure they've considered it, you know, should they make it compatible with the Arduino. And um, 
and they obviously didn't. They, I'm sure they made a conscious choice not to do that for some reason. I'd love to hear why. It'd be the usual big company spin, I'm sure. But hey, even the launch pad name, right? <laughs> you know, I'm sure I can just picture the uh, the marketing meetings, you know, to come up with that you know, launch pad. Oh, it's got pad in it, so it'll be like the new iPad. That's a, you know, it's a big keyword and a big, you know, uh, mental driver for people. And then, you know, launch. Oh, it launches people into the world of microcontrollers. It launches new people into our product line and our vision and our synergy and strategy and all that sort of marketing bullshit. And so I found that quite hilarious, the uh, the name Launchpad. I, I thought, yeah, that's just got, uh, that just smacks of marketing all over it. And um, yeah, anyway, I think it's a big mistake that it's not Arduino compatible because if it was, then um, I'm sure within a couple of weeks you'd probably have some nerd out there write, uh, you know, rewrite the Arduino, um, uh, you know, write an Arduino bootloader for it or something like that, so it's compatible. I'm not sure if that's possible with the um, with the TI chip they've got on board there, but um, if, if it is possible, I'm sure someone would have done it. Um, and there's less reason to do that if it's not Arduino uh, compatible. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's a real shame because I think they really could have um, given Atmel, who um, whose main line of chips is in the, the AT Megas, are in the Arduinos. And I I think they could have really given them a big kick up the ass by hey look you know here's our uh, you know Arduino compatible solution you know and it's a real shame anyway you know it's crazy and. The other problem with this value line series of chips is that they're currently, the ones currently available, the ones you can buy, are only limit, the maximum um, code size is two kilobytes of flash, and that's, you know, that's not much. They reckon they've got two other series coming out in this value line one, which will go up to 16 kilobytes. I think there's a mention of a touch, um, you know, a, a capacitive touch interface as well, and other stuff, but. Hey, I'll believe it when they're actually when I can buy them from Mouser and DigiKey. Otherwise, they they they're just vaporware, really. And you know, so I think it's a bit of a shame. And the other thing is, the Value Line chips are available in DIP format, okay, which is great. Which aims at clearly at the you know that hobbyist hacker, easy to use. Even professional engineers love DIP because they can just whack them on a breadboard and use them. You know, having you know, I think you still have to have a DIP version, but. For their production versions of the chip, they've gone with um, TSOP and QFN, and I hate those. Why can't they have, these are only like 16, 20 pin chips, why can't they have an SO package? Much easier to use, much easier for people to transition from dip into surface mount, whereas now they've got to go to uh, you know TSOP, I'm not sure what the pin pitch is, but it's a, it's a fine TSOP T, uh, TSOP package and a QFN's are just a pain in the ass and uh, I don't like it. Why? SO, please, dip an SO. God, you went to the trouble to do a dip? Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure they put a massive amount of thought into that one. Um, so I don't know who, what part of TI was, was driving that, but anyway, I think that's a big disappointment too, but um, yeah, I really I think it's quite exciting this launch pad at four dollars and thirty cents now here's the other thing which brings me on to this now okay they've met this fantastic price point brilliant absolute brilliant you know way to market your product and get it in people's hands for you know the price of a cup of coffee it's incredible but what happens when you want to buy more of them okay they're only four dollars and thirty cents but the fact is it comes with that huge box Okay, well, you know, it comes in a proper box with a, there's some getting started manual. I'm not sure how many pages it is, but oh, it's just, it's just from a waste point of view, just from an environmental waste point of view. I don't want to get into that sort of stuff, but that, that pisses me off. Can you just buy the board? It would have made a lot more sense if TI simply um, sold the board and maybe, you know, just the board for $4.30 or something like that. And then maybe the entire kit for with the USB cable and the manual in the box for $9.95 or something like that. But yeah, I'm not sure if you can just buy the board. I haven't looked at the TI 
online shop or mouse or anything like that, so I may be talking out my ass here, but um, I possibly don't think I am. So it just would have been nicer if they just sold the board, because that's all people want. You know, people don't, you know, and look at the TI website. They've got this unboxing video. They've got one of the TI guys there unboxing the damn thing. Oh, bloody unboxing. It's so iPad geeky, you know, consumer-like. It's it's not what engineers want to see. They don't care what's in the box. They want to know what the, you know, they want to know, they want just the board and they want to be able to just use the board and they want to know what chips it comes with and all that sort of stuff. Unboxing my ass. Anyway, uh, there you go. The new TI... Uh, Launchpad. It's you know, it's a really great introduction to the TI MSP430 line of chips, which are a brilliant line of chips, and I think it's going to be very popular. But if they just put a bit more thought into it, had a few more, you know, had bigger balls to say we're going to make it Arduino compatible, then really they could have had a massive winner. Well, I think they're going to have a winner anyway, but it could have really, you know, helped perpetuate that um, the Arduino kind of hobbyist hacker maker market even further than it's going to so really good and uh, some bad aspects at the same time same with every product there you go see you next time